Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Stimulus Reflex and how to use it in your Rails applications to make them reactive and real-time without writing any JavaScript. So this is a really, really cool idea and works really, really well. Um, but let's take a look at an example of how to use it. So what I've got here is a Rails application with a to-do scaffold and we want to make it so that when we check a box for our to-dos, they will be marked as completed. Um, and so this is something that we would normally have to add an event listener to that checkbox. We might add a form around each checkbox and then make it a remote is true and then toggle the form. Or we would write some JavaScript and make an Ajax request. Um, then we'd have to write a route and an action and then have that re-render the page or update the specific entry through some JavaScript server side or client side or whatever. It would be quite a bit of work to go and do that. But with Stimulus Reflex instead, we can do this in about three lines of code. So let's take a look at how we would do that with Stimulus Reflex. Now to install Stimulus Reflex, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna need the Rails Webpacker install stimulus command um, to run and install stimulus support for Webpacker and the Webpack pipeline. Um, then we want to bundle add stimulus reflex. You can use that to install the gem um, for you to your gem file or you can add it yourself. Um, then you want to run rails stimulus reflex colon install to install the stimulus reflex um, code into your application. So here is our checkbox um, for the index page. And the thing that we need to add to this is a data attribute, just like we would with normal stimulus stuff. But rather than having data action here, we're gonna say data reflex. This is a helper that you get with stimulus reflex to call a reflex directly. Um, so we can say when you click this, we're gonna call the example reflex. This is just one that comes with stimulus reflex when you install it. And we wanna call a method on here called toggle. And we also are gonna need the ID of our to-do, so let's just pass that in as a data attribute as well. We'll say to-do.id. So this is all we have to do to add an event in our HTML to trigger something um, in JavaScript. So we don't even have to write any JavaScript to make this work. We just write an HTML attribute and we're good to go. So the JavaScript that comes with Stimulus Reflex knows to find the example reflex on the server side. So inside of app reflexes, we can define example reflex as a class that inherits from application reflex. And then we can define a method here called toggle. So to get access to this ID to actually find the to-do out of our database and update it, we can use element.data set dot, or, or rather, um, square brackets and the symbol of ID. So this works very similar to your JavaScript code that you would write. If you had an element on the page, you could call data set on it and grab any of those uh, attributes from it. So effectively, that's what we're doing in our Ruby code, but that code is being passed in. Um, and then the interface that Stimulus Reflex has gives that to us. So we can grab an ID uh, out of that, pass it into todo.find and grab our to-do. And then we can update our to-do and say, let's mark the completed at timestamp either to todo.completed at. We want this to be set to nil if it's already been completed, so we can incomplete it. And if that was incomplete already, we can set that to time.current. So by simply writing these two lines of code and an HTML attribute, we now get a uh, real-time updating ref reactive uh, Rails app. So when we click this link or this, uh, this checkbox, it's going to toggle the checkbox. It's going to run the example reflex that we wrote and it will re-render the page for us. So the way that this works is that when your page loads, Stimulus Reflex starts listening to those events. Then when you click on one, it will use Action Cable to go and trigger that code on the server side. And then the real trick to all this is that when it's finished run, running our Reflex code here in our 
toggle method, for example, it will actually go and rerun the original request based upon the URL. So when we rendered this page for the first time, it printed out all that HTML. After this method finishes, it's actually going to call the index action in our to-dos controller as well and render the HTML out like normal, then send it back over action cable and then update the page for us. So we don't have to do any of that stuff. Um, the browser doesn't even know that that's really going on. We didn't have to write any JavaScript. And now we can go check and uncheck to-dos in our application and we wrote almost no code. So this is really, really cool. It's a nifty way of approaching this and it allows us to write reactive Rails apps by leveraging all of the RESTful stuff that we already have in our controllers, but just having that easily accessible through Action Cable makes it so that we don't have to write hardly any code and we get really cool functionality that's more interactive on our applications. So let's take a look at another example that you might be kind of surprised that you can do with Stimulus Reflex. So let's go into our to-dos controller and we'll create a new to-do in memory, to-do.new, and then in our index action, let's go ahead and render that new form at the top so we can really easily render a to-do. So we'll say to-dos form and our locals here will be, uh, or rather we, I think we can just say to-do equals that to-do. So we'll render that form out and we should see that here at the top and we can create our to-dos and that will show up um, like so. So this works fine, but what if we wanted this to actually do uh, real-time validations on our form? So our to-do model has validates presence of description and we can go into our form for our to-do and we can set this up with a reflex. So we'll say reflex and for this one, let's do on the change event, we will say example reflex uh, form or something like that. We'll just give it a simple name. And for this, we can set an instance variable set to to do dot new description will be element value. So that's gonna grab the value that is set on the text field and then create a new to do and an instance variable, and we can just check if that to-do is valid or not. Now, what's really cool about this is that the instance variables we set in our reflex are also going to be available in our controller action that it calls afterwards. So if we go to our to-dos controller, and instead of setting this with an equals, um, we can use the null equals so that it will use this to-do from our stimulus reflex um, before it calls this. So if you're making a regular Rails request, it will go straight to our index action and set both of these variables. But if it's coming from stimulus reflex, it will set this variable and then set to do's and skip this line because it's already set. And that is going to give us uh, real time validations in our form. So here we can set a value and click away from it. But if we remove this and click away, we're going to see an update here that our HTML is saying our description cannot be blank. So once we've interacted with this and removed the description, it's going to validate that. And that's happening because we listen to the change event, we tell Stimulus Reflex to create a new to-do with that description and check if it is valid. So that is pretty nifty. Now you can do a lot more complex stuff if you write your own JavaScript, because um, you can also interact with Stimulus Reflex through your own Stimulus controllers and JavaScript. Um, but this is some of the cool things that you can do without writing any JavaScript. So we have a really robust um, to-do list application here without having written any JavaScript and it's updating in real time. It's one of my favorite new Rails projects that's out there. It is really cool. There's a ton of neat things you can do with it and it's all um, accessible and written with stimulus. So it's really cool to see some other big projects using stimulus out there. So that is it for this episode. It's just a quick introduction of Stimulus Reflex, but if you would like to see more on this, let me know in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys then. Peace.